A message from a message from a Muslim to a Catholic priest part 4. The Holy Quran. The Holy Quran is the literal word of Allah, which he revealed to his Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, through the angel Gabriel. It was memorized by Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, who then dictated it to his companions. They, in turn, memorized it, wrote it down, and reviewed it with the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Moreover, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, reviewed the Holy Quran with the angel Gabriel once each year and twice in the last year of his life. It contains 114 chapters, each of which is called surah. Each surah contains different number of ayat, plural of ayah which means verse, since it was revealed until this day. There has always been a huge number of Muslims who have memorized all of the Holy Quran letter by letter. Some of them have even been able to memorize all of the Holy Quran by the age of 10. Not a single character of it has been changed, and it will maintain its originality until the day of judgment. Unlike other divine books such as the Bible or the Torah that were Rewritten and changed with thousands of different copies available all over the Christian world, there is only one version of the Holy Quran. Undoubtedly, Muslims believe in all the divine books, the Bible of Jesus, the Torah of Moses, the Psalms of David and the scriptures of Abraham and Moses. Muslims believe in them as they were revealed by Allah in their original words. All the divine texts that were revealed to the prophets have not been able to stand the test of time the way the Holy Quran does. They have been altered and changed over the centuries. Allah says in the Holy Quran, It is we who have sent down the reminder, and it is we who will preserve it, al hijr 9. I alone revealed this Aran to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Aran from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered. al hijr 9. Allah, exalted be he, also says, We have revealed to you, O Prophet, the book in truth, confirming the scriptures that came before it and as a criterion over them. So judge between them according to what Allah has revealed, and do not follow their desires in disregard of the truth that has come to you. To each of you we have ordained a law and a way of life. If Allah had willed, he would have made you a single community, but he tests you in what he has given you. So compete with one another in doing good deeds. To Allah you will all return, then he will inform you concerning things over which you used to differ. al 48 I send down to you, O Messenger, the Quran with the truth about which there is no doubt that it is from Allah. Itis a confirmation and guardian for the revealed books that came before it. Whatever in those books conforms to Itis the truth, and whatever does not is false. So judge between people according to what I have revealed to you in it and do not follow their desires, which they have adopted in leaving the truth that has been revealed to you about which there is. No doubt. I have made a sacred law and clear path for every nation. If I will to make all the laws one, I would have done so. Budi made a separate law for every nation in order to test them all and to see who follows and who does not. So rush towards doing good actions and leave evil ones. Your return on the day of judgment is to me alone. I will inform you about that which you used to differ in and will repay you for the actions you did. Almida 48 This ayah demonstrates that the Holy Quran has been revealed in truth and confirms what has been revealed beforehand of the revelations, and it is a judge and witness over the previous books. In other words, it preserves, protects and witnesses to the truth found in the earlier revelations. One thing which surprises non-Muslims who are examining the book very closely, is that the Holy Quran does not appear to them to be what they expected. What they assume is that they have an old book which came 14 centuries ago from the Arabian desert, and they expect that the book should look something like that, an old book from the desert. The Holy Quran is not a narrative book that records the life of the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as it might seem to many non-Muslims who have never read it. Then they find out that it does not resemble what they expected at all. Additionally, one of the first things that some people assume is that, because it is an old book which comes from the desert, it should talk about the desert. On the contrary, the Holy Quran, which was revealed 14 centuries ago, mentioned facts that have only recently been discovered or proven by scientists. This proves, without any doubt, that the Holy Quran must be the literal word of Allah, revealed by him to Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. And that the Holy Quran was not authored by Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, or by any other human being. This also proves that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is truly a prophet sent by Allah. It is beyond reason that anyone 1400 years ago would have known these facts discovered or proven only recently, with advanced equipment and sophisticated scientific methods. One example, among many, is what the Holy Quran mentioned on human embryonic development. 
In the Holy Quran, Allah tells us about the stages of man's embryonic development. We created man from an extract of clay, then we placed him as a sperm drop in a safe place. Then we made the sperm drop into a clinging clot, then we made the clinging clot into a lump. Then we made the lump into bones, and we clothed the bones with flesh, and then we developed it into another creation. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Al-Mu'minin, 12-14 Verily, I created the father of mankind, Adam, from clay. I took the soil he was created from, from a mixture of water and the soil of the earth. Then I created his progeny who procreate, by way of a drop of sperm that lodges in the womb until birth. I then created the lodged drop of sperm into a red clot of blood, which I then created into a piece of flesh, which I then created into hard bones. I then covered those bones with flesh and then developed it into a completely different creation, by blowing a soul into it and bringing it out into life. Praised is Allah, the best of creators. O oh people! After having passed through all these phases, you shall die when your lives expire. Then, after your death, you shall be resurrected from your graves on the day of judgment so that you may be held to account for whatever deeds you sent forth. Al-Mu'minin, 12-16 Literally, the Arabic word alaka has three meanings, one and a leech, two suspended thing, and, three, blood clot. In comparing a leech to an embryo in the alaka stage, we find similarity between the two. Also, the embryo at this stage obtains nourishment from the blood of the mother, similar to the leech, which feeds on the blood of others. The second meaning of the word alaka is, suspended thing. This exactly draws the picture of the suspension of the embryo, during the alaka stage, in the womb of the mother. The third meaning of the word alaka is, blood clot. We find that the external appearance of the embryo and its sacs during the alaka stage is similar to that of a blood clot. This is due to the presence of relatively large amounts of blood present in the embryo during this stage. Also during this stage, the blood in the embryo does not circulate until the end of the third week. Thus, the embryo at this stage is like a clot of blood. So the three meanings of the word alaka correspond accurately to the descriptions of the embryo at the alaka stage. The next stage mentioned in the ayah is the mudha stage. The Arabic word mudha means chewed substance. If one were to take a piece of gum and chew it in his or her mouth and then compare it with an embryo at the mudha stage. We would conclude that the embryo at the mudha stage is similar in appearance to a chewed substance. This is because of the somites at the back of the embryo that somewhat resemble teeth marks in a chewed substance. How could Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, have possibly known all these scientific details 1400 years ago? When scientists have only recently discovered this using advanced equipment and powerful microscopes, which never existed at that time. Ham and Leeuwenhoek were the first scientists to observe human sperm cells, spermatozoa, using an improved microscope in 1677, more than 1000 years after Muhammad. They mistakenly thought that the sperm cell contained a miniature preformed human being that grew when it was deposited, in the female genital tract. In 1981, during the 7th Medical Conference in Dammam, Saudi Arabia, Professor Emeritus Keith L. Moore, one of the world's most prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology, said, It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Holy Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, from Allah. Because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, must have been a messenger of Allah. Consequently, Professor Moore was asked the following question, does this mean that you believe that the Holy Quran is the word of God? He replied, I find no difficulty in accepting this. During one conference, Professor Moore stated, because the staging of human embryos is complex, owing to the continuous process of change during development. It is proposed that a new system of classification could be developed using the terms mentioned in the Holy Quran and Sunnah. The proposed system is simple, comprehensive, and conforms to present embryological knowledge. The intensive studies of the Holy Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century A.D. Although Aristotle, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from his studies of hen's eggs in the 4th century BC, he did not give any details about these stages. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Holy Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is, these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. 
he could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely no scientific training. The Holy Quran introduces itself as being the guidance for the worlds, we have sent down to you the book as an explanation of everything, and as a guidance. Mercy and Glad Tidings for the Muslims Annal, 89 Remember, O Messenger, the day when we will raise in every nation a messenger who will testify against them about their denial or their acceptance of faith. This messenger will be from their own selves and will speak their language. We have brought you, O Messenger, as a witness against all communities. We reveal the Aaron to you to clarify everything that requires clarification such as the lawful and unlawful, reward and punishment etc. We also revealed it as a guidance for people to the truth. As a mercy to those who have faith in it and practice what it contains, and as good news for those who have faith in Allah of the everlasting bliss that awaits them. al Nal 89 The Holy Quran deals with many topics that concern Muslims. The following are some of them. Belief, faith in Allah, the angels, the messengers of Allah, his revealed books, predestination, and the day of resurrection. Commitment to Islam, submission and Allah consciousness, love of the Lord calmness and well-being. Challenging idolatry and materialism The pillars, the two testimonies of faith, daily prayers, zakat, fasting and pilgrimage to Mecca. The divine laws, halal, prohibited things, and haram, lawful things, marriage and divorce, inheritance, penal laws, vows and contracts, alcohol and drugs, forbidden, tools of Satan to create conflict, sexuality. Inner human energy to be controlled, modesty. Magic and wizardry are forbidden, the miracles were not magic. Spiritual values, mindfulness and alertness, reliance on Allah, commitment and submission, repentance and seeking divine forgiveness, supplication and private prayer, jihad for self-improvement and justice. Prayers of the prophets, sacrifice, spiritual growth, worship, divine remembrance. Moral virtues, truthfulness, honesty, kindness, generosity, forgiveness, patience, gratitude, modesty, humility, and courage. The condemnation of moral vices, falsehood, arrogance, anger, greed, and jealousy. Fulfilling social obligations, caring for parents, kindness to relatives, neighbors, loyalty to friends and country, leadership, peace and reconciliation, the family. Marriage, motherhood, family feuds. Guidelines on earning and spending wealth, a test, hoarding, cheating, squandering, miserliness all condemned. Coping with sufferings and difficulties, coping with the challenges of life, sickness, war and peace. Stories of the prophets, remarkable humans endowed with sublime character to be role models, their trials and tribulations are golden and to be admired. Reciting the Holy Quran is the most sublime and edifying occupation for the Muslim, even when he or she does not intellectually understand its words, as is the case with most non-Arab believers. The Muslims desire to recite the Holy Quran as beautifully as possible, and the art of Tilawa, the proper recitation, has developed into a science.